There's a power for good in the universe, and you can use it. Every Sunday, we invite you to join us in listening to a series of inspirational programs featuring Dr. Ernest Holmes, noted author and spiritual leader in... This Thing Called Life. Now it is my pleasure to present Dr. Ernest Holmes. Thank you, Bill. Friends, did you know that you and I have a close relationship to this thing called life and to the law of good that governs everything? This relationship is so intimate that it is as close to you as your thought. It really is in your own mind and in your own spirit. You are learning to experiment with the greatest truth that can ever come to the mind of man. The realization that you are in partnership with the infinite. What the world has been looking for, you already possess, as does everyone else. For the power of good is available to you right now. In our talk today on perseverance, we are going to discuss just how this power can work. In beginning our discussion, I want to tell you about a man who ran an orphanage through faith. One who had such a complete faith that no matter what was needed, when he prayed, the need was always met. One day the steward of this orphanage came to him, told him they had no food for the children's dinner. Our friend said that he would ask God for food, and retired to his own room and prayed. About thirty minutes before mealtime, the steward again came to him, saying, There is no food. Now this man of faith followed the advice of Jesus. He believed absolutely that food would be provided, and in time. So he told the steward to go out and get ready for the food that would be provided. And in a few moments, a wagon loaded with food came tearing up to the door, and the children enjoyed their regular evening meal. There was something different about this man, for he called the steward into his office after the meal, and said to him kindly, Your services will no longer be required. The steward asked him why. His answer was filled with very great meaning, for he said, This establishment is run on faith, and I cannot afford to have anyone here who doubts God for thirty minutes. Millions of dollars came to this institution during the lifetime of this man, and all as a result of his belief. His life was filled with miracles of faith. Here was a man who wouldn't permit himself to doubt, even for thirty minutes. He was like the woman Jesus told about, who came to a judge in the middle of the night and asked for help. She rapped at the door, and the judge told her to go away and come back again in the morning, that he and his family were in bed and didn't wish to be disturbed. But the woman paid no attention whatsoever. She just kept right on rapping until finally, in exasperation, the judge opened the door and attended her needs. Now, Jesus was the wisest man who ever lived, and he wouldn't have told us this story unless it had a deep meaning for us. This woman's persistence was her act of faith, her complete conviction that whatever is right ought to be and can be. Thomas Edison would try hundreds of experiments. When one failed, he would say, I am that much nearer the answer. If I have failed to arrive at it, it makes no difference. At least, I am that much nearer my goal. Somewhere along the line, I shall find the answer. This was one of the great secrets of his success. He exercised limitless patience. But this patience was not with the laws of nature. It was with this thing called life that he was dealing. The patience Edison exercised was with, the, with this thing called life. He knew the law of life was there, and that in a split second when he obeyed it, it would answer. I have known a number of people who did what has been called praying through. That is, they kept right on praying until they got an answer. Perseverance and persistence are as necessary to the development of faith as they are to other experiments with the laws of nature. 
The late Alexis Carell said that faith acts like a physical law in that it is a definite law of cause and effect. Carell said in his famous book, Man the Unknown, that above most everything else on earth, the world needs groups of people who will create great pools of faith. And the late Dr. Steinmetz, that electrical genius, said that the next hundred years will develop a knowledge of the laws of mind and the laws of spirit that will far out measure the discoveries of the last 7,000 years. At Duke University, there is a man whom I have met who for 20 years has been scientifically testing the transcendent powers of the mind. In some of these investigations, they have tried thousands and thousands of experiments. Finally, they are bringing certain facts to light about the mind that until now have been looked upon as absurd. And this is all done in a psychological laboratory under test conditions. They are bringing something new and something wonderful to the world. Why, then, shouldn't you and I set up a laboratory of thought in our own minds and see what we can do with the greatest power in the world, the power greater than we are? You won't need any elaborate equipment for this, for this thing called life has already furnished your laboratory with the, all the instruments it will ever need. Life has already given you the power. It is yours to use. You already possess this pearl of great price. Take then such conviction as you have, and of each act of faith, fashion a pearl to string on the rosary of your hope. What if you do have memories of failure and doubt? They are only the experiment, experiments that didn't work out. Why shouldn't you too? have the same conviction that Edison, Steinmetz, and Jesus had. What if there have been waste places in your life? There is no use crying over spilt milk. The dairyman will be bringing another bottle in the morning. And so life comes new and fresh when the sun of hope rises to dispel the darkness of fear and uncertainty. Sooner or later, your faith will count its string of pearls unto the end. Find there the symbol of the ages, the union of God with man. This is your rosary. Get busy then, in your laboratory of thought, using the instruments this thing called life has placed there, hope and faith, trust and love, courage and confidence. These are the gifts of God to you. And since this laboratory is in your own mind, it is always with you. The Bible calls it the secret place of the Most High. It says that they that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Here is sufficient inspiration for your experiment. Life has cast the refreshing coolness of its shadow across everything on earth. There is an oasis in every man's desert. There is a rock in every weary land, a rock that shelters and refreshes with the cooling breeze of heaven. The act of faith is so simple, so direct, so childlike in its approach. It is exactly what the great teacher told us. It is an act of belief. And if at first you don't succeed, just try again. Life will never let you down. Now let's make this practical, for theories are no good unless they are used. Your dreams must become a reality and your hope a fulfillment. Really, it reduces itself to this. You are a thinking center in the mind of God. You are surrounded by a law of good that responds to your faith, bringing to bear on it a power that acts like a law because it is a law. This law of good surrenders its whole power to you when you use it rightly. And it is simple enough to know whether you're doing this. For all you need ask is, am I using this law to give more life to myself? 
and more life to others. This law wouldn't be here unless it was supposed to be used. Men of great faith have demonstrated that the law of good exists and that it can be used. So you can bring your experiments and bring them with perfect confidence. Your laboratory is set up. The instruments are in your own hands. You are going to use them. Let's make believe that you are a very fine surgeon who finds it necessary to remove some obstructions from the physical body. He goes about his work in confidence, knowing that when he does remove the obstruction, nature will produce a healing. Perhaps there is a little pain in the process, but he is looking to the end and not the means. Let the patient lie quietly for a few days, doing whatever is necessary under the doctor's care to comply with the laws of nature. All will be well. You are dealing with a great physician because you are dealing with life itself. Now what are some of the things that you must remove with your instrument of faith? Perhaps one of the great obstructions is the doubt of your ability to use faith. For it is not a doubt about faith itself. We all have faith. It is born with us. What you doubt is not faith, but your ability to use it. Well, what is faith, anyway? Stripped naked and bare, faith is a state of mind. Faith is a definite way of thinking. Thoughts are things in a literal sense. If a thought of doubt is a barrier, a thought of faith will remove it. Faith is the instrument in your hands, as a physician to yourself, that enables you to cut away the barriers of doubt and remove them, just as the woman beat on the door until the judge opened it and the man received food for the orphanage, so your thought of faith can break down all barriers that obstruct your hope. In actual practice, you would say, I am no longer afraid of this doubt because I understand it is only a thing of thought, and I am a thinker and I can control my thoughts. Whenever doubt appears, just say, you don't belong to me. I refuse to entertain you. Just run along and mind your own business. And then if the doubt says, but I am asleep with my family, go away until tomorrow. Don't forget the woman who persevered. Just keep beating on the doorway of your faith until some unseen hand opens it and you enter and find justification for your persistence. And God will never let you down. All the powers of the universe will conspire on your behalf. Doesn't make the slightest difference what your past has been or how many times you may have failed. Life itself cannot fail and it won't fail you. If you have tried a thousand times, remember that at universities they sometimes try an experiment many thousands of times, and so can you. But just as they know that there is an immutable law of nature upon which they are depending, so you may be certain that there is an immutable law of God upon which you are depending. And somewhere along the line, you will succeed. You cannot fail. Gradually, as the thoughts of doubt and fear and uncertainty are removed and their influence fades away, you will find faith like a morning star shining brightly across your pathway, leading you down the highway of hope to the goal of your heart's desire. Now, Dr. Holmes brings you his meditation for today. As we have discussed, there is a power for good in the universe available to all of us. Our approach to this power is through faith, prayer, and conviction. For faith and prayer are our communion with the invisible, with this thing called life. It is through communion that we make our requests known, and through faith that we receive an answer. Let us then take as our thought for today, Thou shalt call upon the Lord, and he will answer. And in our meditation, 
Let us see if we cannot arrive at a place of complete conviction. Let us shut every other thought from the mind, everything that could distract our attention and listen quietly and peacefully, but with a deep and an ins- very sincere trust. I do believe that the law of good is around me. I do believe that divine love acting through this law can and will meet all my needs. I am entering into the peace and the quiet of this thought with absolute conviction, as I affirm that in the divine presence there is fullness of life for me and for everyone I may be thinking of. I accept divine guidance in everything I do. I believe a power greater than I am will bring to me this day the love, the happiness, and the friendship that I wish for the whole world. I believe that today I shall have the opportunity to comfort and help everyone I meet. And in so doing, I know that I shall be blessed, blessed with the joy of giving as well as the happiness of receiving. And I expect to be happy. I anticipate goodness. I enter into peace. And I know that as I call upon the Lord and the law of good, I shall receive a direct answer. And may this good I am to receive become a blessing to everyone I meet. There's a power for good in the universe, and you can use it. <laughs> 